everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to play with creating reverse speckles on some sock yarn using some resist points on that yarn. This is something that we've played with sometimes in the past, but I think that it's been a while since I've done a real dedicated video on the technique. I know I've done it in live streams uh, and I'm excited to play with it again. So I'm going to show you how I like to add my resists onto the yarn and then we'll go through dyeing the yarn and everything like that. Today's video is sponsored by Anathy. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. If you'd like to learn more about how to get shout outs and to sponsor one of these episodes as an individual viewer, uh, you can find a link to the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop in the video description and iCard. If the sponsorship slots are currently sold out, don't worry, they will keep coming back as I complete more episodes. The big concept with resist is that if you can physically keep the dye from accessing the yarn in various points, then you can preserve the original color. Um, so we would get more dye over here than we would underneath this acrylic yarn that I tied right now. There are many different ways we could do resists. You've seen me use zip ties to do a larger resist chunk, but what this does is not only is there resist within where my fingers are, but on the interior of the skein there's some resist there because it's easier for the dye to penetrate this area on the outside than that area on the inside. And so that's one reason for tinier resist points I like to do this more spread out form with basically it's like a really tight butterfly tie. I like to use cream or white acrylic yarn for the resist. You can use something thinner like thread but that's a lot harder to tie tightly and I honestly like the results that I get from using just the thicker yarn. I don't want to use colored acrylic yarn because the dye could bleed and add something uneven to our project. So I'm going to take, I'm starting off with this 18 inch piece of yarn, wrapping it around a little random section and then just tying that tight. And I am going to be doing that section by section. So grabbing a little bit and tying that tight. Um, I think my acrylic tie is a little bit longer than what you actually need, but the more space that you want in between, I guess the more tighter that you want these resist points to be, choose smaller sections. And if you don't mind a little more halo and want the resist point to be a tiny bit larger, you could take a larger chunk. I am purposefully varying the size a bit in here, doing smaller and larger sections because I don't want these resist marks to feel too, too regular on the yarn. Um, I want there to be some variation in these sharper pastel slash white specks. And then for the last one, on our little section, I'm just going to tie a little bow. And so right here between these two sections, there's some evenness, but in this time I have fewer sections that I did than the example I did off camera. And as I do this, I might also do some at angles. Um, so that way the space and the distance between them is not even. And all of that is also a matter of personal preference tie a different one and this time I'm going to try to angle it a little bit more so there's more difference from what I did before um, but each time I'm going to tie tight and you can even shift it as you go so I'll, sh I'll say what I mean by shifting in a moment but you can just like if you were to braid hair you could then pull some of the hair out to sort of quote mess it up and make it a little less neat. Uh, we can do that here as well. So in these sections that I added, I can pull the yarn through those resist points to make it more or less even in these sections and to sort of vary where the resist points are on the yarn a little bit more. But again, this is a preference point. And in a given section, I could even leave some yarn out. I don't have to tie off all of the yarn. So there's many different ways that you could play around with this. But ultimately, I hope for something somewhat random. 
Unfortunately, white dye is not something that exists. So you can't dye yarn black and then speckle on white yarn, um, speckle on white speckles afterwards because the dyes are sort of additive. So you can add darker color and add more color on top, but you can't take away that color in sections and there's not like a white pigment that you can add on top. But here you can see how there's some more space between some of the resists and less space between some of the resists. And if I wanted to, I could pull some of this yarn through to make things even less even between the sections. And so I think that I might do a tiny bit of that just by pulling on either side over here as well. So the skein is looking shorter um, and it's not quite as neat, but then once we remove all of these, it will spread out these resist points a little more. And I should add that the yarn we are dyeing today is Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This is one of my favorite sock yarns to dye, and I use it all the time. Uh, if you want to learn more about the yarn or any of the other dyes or tools that I'll use in this video, you can find affiliate links in the video description. And on this one, I'm going in sort of a more random order. Here I'm going to do a bigger section, just mixing it up a little bit to show that it does not have to be, quote, perfect in the way that you do it. You just are going to want to be super careful as you undo these ties in the very end. Now that I have all the ties I want on this yarn, and it's a little bit of a mess looking, I think I'm also going to add a reusable nylon zip tie, just so that way I have something to hold on to without getting things too tangled. I love using these as extra ties, and as resists occasionally as well. I am now going to go pre-soak this yarn for at least 20 or 30 minutes, so that way the fibers are all really saturated. You could definitely dye this with the yarn dry, um, but that actually adds its own, it's not really a resist, but if the yarn is dry, then you will get less even color absorption already. And I really want the physical resist from the ties that we added to sort of, quote, shine. So I'm gonna go and just pre-soak this in some plain tap water at room temperature. In my dedicated dye pot, I have 16 cups of water. I'm going to add four tablespoons of white vinegar. For the dye, I'm going to use my favorite blue in the world, Dharma Frozen. It's a stunning bright blue, and this is a 1% stock solution. And I'm adding about three quarters of a cup or approximately 180 milliliters, which would give us about a 1.8% DOS or depth of shade. If you want to learn more about the stock solutions and depth of shade, um, I have a whole video series on the math of yarn dyeing where I go into all these calculations really in depth. A 1% stock solution means that there is one gram of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters of water. Um, and so that can be a way for you to measure out the amount of dye that you want to use uh, for a project. So now we're going to wait for this to warm up. Um, and once we start seeing some movement here in this dye bath, and then we can come in and get ready to dye our resist yarn. All right, we are warm. We're definitely not hot yet, but I'm still ready to go for it. I squeezed out a lot of the water from our pre-soaked yarn gently um, because if it's really saturated then less dye will kind of come into contact with the colors right away and now really we're just going to add it and gently gently move it. I don't want to go too vigorous and like help the dye go into those resist points but in the areas that aren't on a resist I want it to sort of float freely in here so we can access all of the color. Okay, our yarn has absorbed all of that color. Oof, this is a beautiful, beautiful blue. You can see that we do have some lighter patches. It is tonal with those resist points. So I'm excited. I'm very excited to see it. 
um, all complete. But I'm now going to turn off the heat and let the yarn cool off in the pot. Uh, there's really no reason why it has to remain in the pot. It's just convenient. But um, at this point, I would be comfortable setting it aside so it could cool faster if needed. Once the yarn cools, then we'll go wash it, yada, yada, yada. But I plan to let it dry before we remove the resists. In general, it's easier to untangle or clip resists off when yarn is dry, in my opinion. If it's something like a zip tie or just one big tie, it could be easier to do, but uh, you definitely don't want to accidentally cut the yarn. That would be tragic. <laughs> uh, so that's why dry is my personal preference. But we can do a little bit of a peek while we're washing. The dye bath had completely cleared, um, and there's a little warmth in here, but we can go wash the yarn. But what's fun is you can see some of that resist peeking out. Sure, some of that is the yarn itself, but you can tell when you look at the yarn that there's some paler patches in there. Wahoo! I'm not expecting there to be any bleeding of any kind, but it is always good to wash your yarn just in case. And yep, no bleeding. I also like to use a little bit of clear dish soap. That was more than a little bit, but enough just to check and see if there's bleeding. Sometimes the addition of soap will cause some bleeding, which it's better to know before you have a finished garment. And nope, no bleeding. So I'm going to rinse this a few more times, rinse out the soap, but I'm not going to remove the resists until the yarn is dry. So I will go ahead and put this through my Nina Soft Spin Dryer, hang it to dry, and then we can remove the resist and reveal our beautiful reverse speckles. Anathy, I am so, so excited to go and take these resists off of the yarn. You really can see, like a little bit, if I move it, ah, there is some of the reverse speckling that we got here. Eek. There is also some tonal variation in here that isn't based on the resists, but really this was a kettle dyed technique and so we have some lighter and more pigmented patches. But even those light patches are, well, they don't pale in comparison, <laughs> they're pigmented in comparison to what I think we're gonna see from some of these resist points. I do have scissors on hand in case we need it, but since there were no hard knots, you can also sort of pick to remove, but then you can see that beautiful, beautiful white patch in our yarn. You can definitely go in with scissors if you need, um, but if I am gonna do scissors, I like to make sure I'm using really sharp scissors and I will um, make an effort and watch and be very careful before clipping it. But actually, <laughs> you can see some resist almost on the tie itself because there is a little bit of a pastel blue versus white where the ties were. But now we can see this beautiful resist uh, speckle on our yarn. Removing all of the worsted weight acrylic ties only took a couple of minutes. Um, but if you want to speed things up, once you undo that initial bow, clip the ends of the ties short and it'll all sort of start to just pop off of the yarn. But you can also reuse your ties for another project just as an extra tie. But again, I do recommend starting with a pale, preferably white acrylic tie if you don't want to risk any color transfer for a project. Now comes something that I find very satisfying. I'm going to take the yarn and snap it to organize it a little bit more. You can see that someplace it almost looks like those reverse speckles are in a straight line, but in other places, really, there's a variety of difference from where those are located. And one of the reasons why I like to do that is it adds a little more randomness in where they show up once it is knit up. If everything was sort of perfectly in the same place, then you could get some more pooling, and this gives it a little more randomness, especially if you only tie off half of the yarn in some spots and not others. The end results are soft, subtle, and fun. 
And again, the smaller of a resist string that you use, like thread, versus this more worsted weight yarn, you can get even tinier and smaller resist marks. But these will show up in a speckled way if you're knitting or crocheting and add little almost stars to this blue, this bright blue uh, sky. Anathy, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. I really hope that you love this yarn as much as I do. This is a video that I had been meaning to do for a very long time. I've played around with resist techniques in many ways over the years, um, but I'm not sure if I have actually done this in a dedicated video yet, so I'm thrilled to finally share it. Right here is a nice place where you can sort of see the sharper white of the resist and then a little bit of that paler blue halo around it. You get the brightest resist, the palest marks where the ties are actually physically compressing the yarn. And then you get some other resist just from the fact that the yarn is bunched up within those ties. And so this is the halo that you'll see more of if you clump the whole yarn in one resist section together, but you'll get a little bit less of it if you uh, do the more butterfly type tie resists like we did today. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you enjoyed this video make sure to give the video a like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any new videos. I love playing with different techniques of applying color to yarn and through this Dye Pot Weekly series you can really watch my journey and see me grow as a fiber artist and independence dyer. And I like to take risks and try things out so that way then you can decide what techniques you want to go for with your own dyeing adventures. If you would like to help support the content on this channel, uh, there's many ways you can do that. Commenting and engaging is the biggest way to support everything Chemnitz. Um, but you can also sponsor a video yourself. Uh, the listing is in the video description to my Etsy shop. But you can also go and join the Chemnitz Patreon. Uh, Patreon is a fantastic platform that allows uh, viewers to support the content creators they really enjoy. And I offer some really cool perks over there that do include shout outs as well. You can find a link to the Patreon in both the video description and iCard. It is a true joy and pleasure to create these videos, and I hope that the amount of fun that I'm having really does come through. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.